So, we've transitioned, as you can see, from the, uh, the trailer, cleaned up, got the sheets in here for the bottom of the boat. And setting up here for um, basically building the bulkheads as well as getting all our uh, dimensions as far as dead rise and everything else set up. So let me just kind of, I'll walk you through here real slowly and let you kind of follow the process that I took. Um, this, is, this is pretty important on this whole boat. Uh, you know, this sets your dead rise. This sets, um, you know, everything's based off of this basically. So you want to take a lot of time and, and get this right. So, I've not got a fancy jig or anything else, you know, to do this. Um, but that doesn't mean it, it takes anything, you know, that, that fancy. So, show you what I've got here. So, what I did was, I, uh, I strung out my sheets. Now, you remember I ripped my sheets. So, I put the rips to the inside, and I went with the factory edge on the outside due to the fact, you know, I'm... I'm very confident in my rips, but if there's any inconsistencies, that's where you're going to see it because my sides are going to lap 3 uh probably about a quarter inch in for, for weld all the way down. So, you know, if there is a wave, you're going to see it in the sides, whereas in the middle, uh, not so much. And I'm going to have the uh, a keel welded on the bottom, an inch and a quarter keel so you know that'll also be it'll be kind of double welded if i do have a little bit of a gap uh, as it turns out i've got you know pretty much nothing uh it, it, everything came together real nice so what i've done here is i know i wanted 15 degrees of dead rise on this boat now i'll just kind of go back and dead rise is basically uh the point from the center at the very bottom to the top of the bottom of the boat, basically, that rake right there is called dead rise. So what I did was I started using shims and I found out, uh, you know, how tall I needed to make my dead rise because naturally, you know, the wider the boat, uh, you know, and the narrower the boat, there's no real set formula. You just kind of got to go for it. And so what I found with this boat is I needed to be, uh, ten and a half inches off of the floor. Now, as you can see, I put down some OSB. I put down some half inch OSB because I'm going to end up having to weld that whole bottom seam, and I didn't want to spall out my concrete with the heat. So I'm actually going to use the OSB as a backer. So set that down first. Found out that I needed to be ten and a half inches. So what I did was, you can see I've got a, a 16 foot two by six there. So I keep my edge uh, real nice and, and straight. So where if I just put just blocking, you know, it has a tendency to have a wave in it. So I cut nine inch blocks and laid them down. And that way I could put my board on top and get my 10 and a half inches. So found my dead rise. I, uh, I went ahead and just be on the safe side. I'm using two different angle finders. There's about a degree of variation. Uh, in the angle finder, this one here is very old. Uh, I, I bought this one new and I think it's reading a little bit more accurate. And as it settles in, it's settling in right at 15 degrees. This one here settling at 16. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now I know that my boat has a dead rise of 15 degrees. So today is the big day. Um, I have been putting this off for, I put it off an extra day just so I could sit here and stare at it because this is the part that really freaks me out. This is, uh, this is cutting, the, cutting the two sheets to form the V in the boat. And uh, you know, these are really, really expensive sheets. If I screw it up, then I'll end up with a big gap that I'll have to patch in and fill. I don't want that because that's where your water's hitting. You know, this, that's the, you know, I'm going to have a keel in it, but at the same time, I hate to be patching stuff. Uh, if it's too narrow, I got to keep chopping stuff off and it's going to make it hard to get everything lined up. So, you know, I've been really kind of freaking out about it, but I just finally got it done. Uh, what you guys just saw in the time lapse there, whenever it was all dark, what I did was 
I know I want 28 inch sides on this boat and I know I want this boat to sit relatively flat in the water. I mean, as far as the, the back of the boat to the front of the boat, I don't want it to have a big rake pitch. Uh, you know, this promote, this boat's going to be primarily used for drifting and spider rigging. So I don't want to create a big sail where it tends to the front to drift off, you know, one side to the other or the back vice versa. I want it to kind of, uh, take the wind equally. So I want a pretty level straight across boat. Uh, so what I did was I took my laser level down there. I squirt off the both ends there and I know I want 28 inch sides on this boat. So from that edge right there, that edge right there, I went up 28 inches, leveled off my laser level. Then I came down here and I found out where that was going to be. And it just happens to be right here on this Sharpie line. So that's going to kind of be the profile of the boat. It's going to sit, you know, somewhere around 40 inches uh, in the front of the boat. It looks real nice. So now I need to cut for my V because you can see here to form a V out of two pieces of you know rectangular metal and have a rake in the boat you know where the make it not a rectangle you know bring the front end in a little bit more than the back you have to overlap these sheets and you have to cut them so what i did was i took my plumb line on my leisure level and i got that line going right down that seam just as dead nuts as i could from the back of the boat to right where it starts splitting these two sheets where i've got them overlapped uh, from then, I took and I traced this line, followed the laser line, and that's going to be my cut line. So, by all rights, what you should be able to do is you should be able to take this top sheet, you should be able to cut this, use the off wall, and transfer the exact, transfer this piece to the bottom piece, and you should have your boat stay square and, and true down the line without having to remeasure and potentially, you know, have your boat be all dog leg in, in one side or the other. So that's the idea. This is a rough line. Uh, I, it's kind of a pain to get this boat in this position. So I just roughed out the line. I've got mark points throughout. Uh, I'll take a, and try to straighten up that line as best I can and cut it and I'll rip it. And then, like I said, I'll take the off wall and, and transfer it to this sheet and then by all rights, whenever I bring this boat back up, then they should match up real nice and neat. Now, one other thing is this boat here has got a 15 degree dead rise, being that there's 15 degrees in the back uh, from the center to the, to the outside corner. Now, if you look at this boat here, my big V bottom boat, this is your traditional like Canadian style walleye boat, deep V, they consider this a deep V. That V in the front is 35 degrees. Now I don't want this boat to have quite that big of a V. Um, I'd like to stay around that 25 to 27 degree mark because what that'll do is that'll push that V a little further back. So where this boat here, whenever I beach it, I should be able to have the front of the boat up on the bank a little bit further before the actual boat hits. It's gonna push that V back a little bit. And this boat's gonna be beached a lot. So instead of putting all that pressure and beaching right there, I'll be able to push it back. And I don't really need, I, I'm not that concerned with that big of a of a V in the front, you know. If I'm taking waves where, where that front of that V is starting to break the waves, it's we're in big water anyway, so. Um, what I did was I set this angle here to 20 degrees and the thinking is that whenever I cut these I'll be able to kind of press down the center and I'll be able to make a bulkhead to fit whatever I want 25 27 degrees and that'll form this V in uh, better I didn't want to go and set it at 25 degrees and then by the time I I wrote it roll it rather uh you know it'll i'll end up with a gap so i just i went just a hair under and i think it, it'll work out perfect this leaves me still um my front deck where my trolling motor is going to sit is going to be somewhere in this area you know somewhere in the 16 18 20 inches before my deck actually starts and right here that's kind of where this ratchet strap is here i'm just a hair over six foot i'm at 76 inches so 
you know, I've still, I've got a, a nice sweep, not much. I, I want this boat to be wide in the front. I, I want a spider rig out of it and I want a lot of room in the front and I've got over six feet in the bottom of the boat. So, you know, that is tons of room. I can have a, uh, a chair right there and a, and a pedestal right there and still have lots of room in the center without having to swing your feet over the water and all that nonsense. So that's my thinking on this. That's my ideas. Um, basically what's going to happen is as I drop this sheet down, this line's going to kind of start making like a heart shape and I'll be able to cut it out and bring the two together. So that was what all the darkness was that you saw in the time lapse. It was me getting the laser set up and getting all these lines squared away and traced. And like I said, this is this is the big moment. These are really expensive sheets to be cutting up. I don't want to don't want to screw this up. So anyway, I'm committed now. Uh, that's what she looks like. Just real quick here, to try to try to better illustrate what I was talking about with by cutting the uh, the front end. I got the sheets on the ground now and. I've put this straight edge up and I've got that very edge, that straight edge on my mark where the sheets will come together. And then here I've got it right on the edge of my mark. Now this is why I had to trace it with the laser rather than just making marks and uh, you know drawing a straight line. You can see if you would have just drawn a straight line, marked one side, marked the other, you'd have been way, way shy because you've brought your boat up at a curve. So it's actually not a straight line that you're cutting. And now if I would have, if I would have done that, you can see very clearly I'd have lost over an inch of material and then whenever I'd have brought my sheets together, then, you know, I'd have had this large gap. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm at as far as uh, trying to illustrate this. So what I'm going to do is, you can see see the arch right there. It's kind of it's it's on a curve. It's on a slight radius. So what I'm going to do is, you can see my line's a little crooked and a little, uh, you know, just from freehand in it. I'm going to take a small small straight edge and kind of straighten everything up really nice. And then uh, because this is on a radius, rather than cutting it with the the big worm drive saw that you guys saw me use for ripping all these sheets, I'm actually going to cut this with a uh, with a jigsaw and go right down through here and, and try to stay as straight as possible. And then, like I said, I'll just simply transfer it over to the other side, and these sheets should match up. What you're going to end up with, you can see, is more or less kind of like starting to make a heart once we cut this out and then as we bring them up then everything will fit fit right rather than you know if it was a straight edge to a straight edge and this is why it was important for me to raise these up and figure out where the top of my boat was going to be first so that way i'm not having a big gap so like i said i hope that better kind of illustrates what why and why I did what I did and why you have to do that. All right, so that's done. Um, show you what I've got here just to kind of kind of reiterate what I'm getting at, but so what I did was I took just a small straight edge, just a small torpedo level, and I went through my line that I had traced, and you know you can make a, a radius out of a series of small straight lines. And so what I did was I just went down and I made the line as straight as possible. And then I took a razor knife and I scribed the line so that way it's something real accurate for me to follow rather than that real thick uh, Sharpie line. What are you doing, buddy? Well, Rebel Dog's watching me do this. He's, he got his, I got his bed set up there. He's watching me build the boat there, and he can watch outside and watch the world. What do you say, buddy? You camera shy? <laughs> okay. So, anyway, now that I've got that piece cut, now what I can do is I can take this piece, and you can see I've got it flipped over, and I've got it clamped down to, to my other sheet. And so this is my pattern basically. I can just now run my jigsaw right down that line and I've got two pieces come off exact uh, you know minus the curve of the blade but that's not that that big of a deal 
So what this does is this kind of ensures that your boat stays square. Uh, you know, because if you would measure this and then measure this, there's a chance if you were off just a little bit by having to raise everything up, you know, then what's going to happen is your boat's going to end up with like a dog leg in it because it's not going to be true all the way, all the way straight. So if you start off with good square sheets, which I have, you should be able to take the off all and transfer it over and that just ensures that you're square. So anyway, I've got a pattern to follow here. Uh, like I said, using a jigsaw. I hate jigsaws, but you know, in an instance like this, this is about the only way you can do it, uh, you know, and stay accurate. So anyway, that's, uh, that's what I've got going here. And uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and cut this other side and then I'll, I'll raise this boat back up and you'll see what I'm saying, how everything comes together. But you can see, you can see the nice gentle sloping curve in it now. So anyway, what do you say, buddy? Yep, you got any input for us? No, he says, get this sucker done.